Hello, and welcome to Clan Macad. So by now you should know how to lay out visible information in both methods of orthographic projection. So using the same component we did last time, let's lay it out in third angle projection and create all the views we may need. Now as it stands, these views show us the general proportions and features of the object. However, should we want to manufacture it, vital information is still missing. So if we take a closer look at the front view of the object, if I bring some of the component back, you'll be able to see there are holes travelling through the body of the object that aren't detailed in any of the other views. Sure, some of their entrance sizes are there, however their actual journey through the body of the object is missing from any of the views. Now to show information that is not visible in orthographic projection and engineering drawing, we use hidden lines. Now, to be careful here, this is not just stuff that is in the body of the object, but even stuff that is past the first visible surface, at any depth, even around the back side, any information must be brought forward using these hidden lines. This is what hidden lines look like. They are a continuous chain of dashed line work that, just like visible lines, showcase any geometric change in direction or the extent of any continuous and consistent change in direction, such as a sphere, cylinder, or anything like that. Now, the length of the dashes and the length of the gaps should be kept consistent as much as possible. However, the priority is absolutely to show where lines end or change direction. So you'll see in a few cases here where, say, the cylinder's hole travels in and starts to get smaller. The hidden lines will make sure that the corners are shown, even if it means breaking the scale and proportions of the pattern so far. Now, on the front view, this is all very clear and easy to understand where these holes are traveling through the object and exactly what shape everything is. It isn't too cluttered and you can see it all nicely. The problem with hidden detail, however, is you cannot pick and choose what you show. You must show any hidden detail, any changes in direction within that view itself. Not over the whole drawing, but in the view that you're going to enable hidden lines, you must enable all of them. Now, if we move up to the top view, we may get a chance to see things get a little more cluttered. We'll add the information for hidden lines for the two holes we already had in the front view, as they're exactly the same with a rotational axis of symmetry. Now what we need to do is add the changes in direction for where the large central hole travels through the object from one side to the other. And now what we need to do is show where the four smaller holes on the front of the object travel through again from one side to the other. Use again the same little green lines, which again aren't part of the final drawing, they're just there as a guide for you guys to see where I'm getting the information from. So as you may notice, things are a little bit less clear than they were in the front view. We have a lot more hidden lines, and sure, each element made sense as I brought it in one by one, which works for an animation, but this is a drawing we're talking about, where you're going to view the final thing as it is. And with all these lines over the top of each other, things just aren't as clear as we would like. And there's even worse examples coming up. So for the side views, let's bring in our information and hidden lines there. We need the four holes. We need the central hole. We need the top hole. And we also need the information from either side. Like I said, it's not just what's inside the object, but what's on the other side, the back, through the middle, anything with hidden lines, anything that cannot be seen from the front surface back must be added in as long as it is not perfectly in parallel behind another visible line. That is the only time a hidden line won't show up is if it's perfectly in parallel behind another visible line. So if we start to bring this out for a comparison against projection of visible lines only like we had before, but just stop by the bottom view for just a second while we just discussed that it's exactly the same as the top view, except the hole at the top is shown as a hidden circle because it can't be seen from the bottom side. That's why I'm not dwelling on it. It's almost the same as the top. And now let's just pull out a little further and you can see between the two, the visible layout shows us the shape and features of the part fairly well. However, some information is missing and we have the views we just created, which are of all the hidden detail we may need and all the manufacturing information is there. Now, we don't necessarily need every single one of these views to show it. The front view is an especially good one because it's clear. The other ones, some may be needed, others might not, and it's just about clarity and ensuring all the information is there. 
So there's one more way of showing information that would otherwise be hidden from visible view using orthographic projection, and that is section views. We'll have a look at that in the next video. It counters the problem with hidden as you can pick and choose what you show in sections. And we'll look at that next time. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.